everyone, I'm Gary Tucker and welcome to my channel. I present weekly demonstrations on painting with watercolor. Many of you have asked about how you can support this channel, take a workshop or attend a class in person. I refer you to the description below. There you can find information on today's subject, ways to support the free content on this channel and links to other resources. Thanks for watching. Well, today we're working from uh, motif number one in Rockport, Massachusetts, using that as a subject. And I want to do a little different view. There's a sort of traditional view, which is looking straight at it. I want to do more of a angled view. I just feel it represents a better design choice. And I'll explain that a little bit more. Um, as I'm laying this out, I'm thinking of the big shapes first. And that would be the building resting on the stone levee. And everything else is built on that. So <clears throat> Everything else is built on that. The platform here, we'll put our figures there, but let's build this house first, literally build this house, this lobster shack. And if you've ever been to Rockport, you know why the, the crowds gather around here. It's, um, It's got some of the best seafood, not this particular shack, but the town of Rockport. You can get a great lobster roll. Of course, you can get all sorts of things, scallops, fish. Well, I'm not going to talk about that now because it's going to distract me, but I'll be hands happy to give you some addresses later on. Anyway, I'm laying in the basic lines and here's where a little bit of perspective will be helpful and also some thoughts about working with, uh, with choosing a view. This view is what we would call a three-quarter view. It's not showing the lobster shack straight on, which would be more of just a simple square shape. This is showing um, the view with a strong oblique going up, going up a little steeper, coming down. There's just a lot more interest in this shape if we render it like this. Chimney shadows, this is where they Maybe they smoke the lobster or they work on it in the winter time. Uh, and okay, so we have our main structure, right? Slightly offset, slightly offset, a little bit to the left, a little low. We're just going to show the top part of the seawall here, the, the levee the stone foundation that sits on. A little bit different design. That allows me to make things a little bigger. Since I'm doing figures, that helps me. And I'm looking at this from across the water, but my eye level is still almost with these figures here. Anything below the eye level is slightly going up, going up a little more, slightly coming down, slightly coming down a little more. This is a different perspective. It's facing us. It's got some different vanishing points. This is very much related to our line of sight and the vanishing points being on that line of sight, eye level. And so this gives me what I feel is the most interesting view of this simple shack. 
And I like it also because it shows us that these, uh, some lobster traps here. So the, we got working lobstermen. We got the lobster traps ready to go. They're ready to head out to sea. Or maybe they're bringing in their catch because they tend to head out very early and come back rather early because of that. So they're out um, picking up their traps probably close to 5 a.m., 4 a.m., well before most of us are coherent. They're, they've already started their work. So it's a tough life. It's not an easy life. And the, the season is pretty long. It's not just uh, relegated to summer months. They, they work close to this, into December. And um, so they get a few months off in the wintertime. That's usually when they repair lines, repaint their traps, all sorts of maintenance to be done in this type of work also. Shadows here, shadows here as well. So some very simple components to this particular lobster shack. And um, I feel it's, it's a nice view. We do have moorings for the boats that pull up, as well as ladders if it's low tide. I'm just going to show a few of these. But I'm careful to think about how they relate to my main subject. Like, I don't want to put one right in front of my lobster man. It's going to block the view. So even though they, the, um, they, there might be some here, I'm going to structure them so that they... Number one, occur at different intervals, different, slightly different angles. So that they don't block the lobstermen. Something like that. Creates a nice rhythm. And I am very keen on the rhythm that's in this uh, piece rhythm based on repeated shapes. So we have these as repeated shapes. We have back here even more interesting is the village of Rockport in the distance where we have some nicely repeated shapes also of rooftops. And I'm going to oops, I'm going to make the most of that well, make the most of it. I'm going to use that very much in, in um, creating this piece. We have the cupola of the major church, which is sitting on a hill. We have another Interesting rooftop here. So all these, these are what's, look at that rhythm. By repeating the shape, we create sort of a rhythm. We also, if we vary it, if we make it grow smaller in the distance, we create depth. We're just showing the peak of the roof. We're not showing much more than that. We're not, we'll place some windows, we'll place some trees, but this is the major structure. This is my foreground. So even though there's a lot of uh, contrast, hard edges here, I'm going to keep it just that, the foreground that leads to this bright area where the sun, sun is striking, uh, where my lobstermen are gathered, kind of having a little breakfast or a coffee break or something like that. I'm going to put in a few details, some nice windows here. Feel free to exaggerate. That's my motto for emphasis. 
course, there's some windows up here. We have a nice uh, element coming out here. When they catch the big game fish, they like to display it up here. So there's a little timber coming out there. This timber is also catching some of the light. So a very integrated scene, center of interest, center of interest. Um, you would assume it's going to be the lobsterman. We do have, I want to play on the light that's coming through the scene. The light is from up above and the left. We can read that mostly, most clearly through the angle of this shadow coming off of the chimney. We have a little gull on the chimney. We'll put another little gull here and cast a shadow from him as well. And since we like odd numbers, so we'll put some goals in the sky, maybe. Maybe sitting on top of a, the lobster box there, the lobster traps. So yes, let's, let's make our figures with a little more clarity. doing something here. We'll have a guy walking in who wants to join, join the party. Also, this leads us in. If we show this person walking in, We, can, we kind of follow him, we grow more interested. So we're getting a sort of center of interest here. I'm, it could be up here as well. This is quite interesting to play on the rooftops. We might diminish this. Lobster traps, seagull. So there's, there's a little bit of a narrative here, but I typically favor the sunlight as my main, <laughs> I guess, narrative. I want to look again at the shadows cast here. There's a nice shadow coming across here. An additional shadow here. Wherever I can emphasize the shadows, I do. shadow here as well as here coming down so I am keen on uh, the shadows and the the type of light that they describe So a couple things to think about uh, from a point of view of design. One is I zoomed in. If you look at the picture, I zoom in a bit. I'm really foregoing all that interesting stuff below. Um, it's a portrait of this building and the, how the light affects this building with some figures to give it scale and give a little bit of a narrative. Uh, the village behind, the repeated shapes of our rooftops, the peak of the roof, uh, is repeated in several places. And this is to give a feeling of uh, rhythm and depth to the whole image. Here too, here too. And maybe another figure here.
So this is a portrait basically of our shack, repeated rhythms in the pylons through here, repeated rhythms in the wrap in the rooftops, figures also repeated. Uh, we've zoomed in for scale. Now we have to make some choices about uh, tonal values and they're going to really work to describe the light. So naturally I'm going to keep this uh, rather pale behind and a lot of contrast through here where we see the red against the bright roofs. Through here it's going to be not as dark as in the image. I don't want it to interfere with a view of our subject too much. I want to, to complement this. Color-wise, we're going to be using a, well, a red, a blue, a green, and a yellow. Yellow ochre, primarily through the background, with some light blue here and there. And I'm going to use a little bit of alizarin in creating the motif number one. Blues through the figures. Down below, grays. So let's see how that part goes. That's our next stage. We'll, do, we'll be doing this painting in two washes. After creating the drawing, we're going to put on some light washes to get us started to hit some of the bright notes, such as this rooftop, the sky, uh, the rooftops behind, uh, the bright path through here the bright face of the building. Those are the high notes that we want to hit in that first wash. Then we follow it with some shadows in the buildings behind, in the trees behind that. Uh, certainly the shadows playing on the motif number one. Shadows as well as some of the uh, dark aspect of the stones that create the wall here and that extend upward in the timbers. timbers. The lobster traps, uh, a bit of green showing here and there. That's the typical color, so that remains sort of an important color because it complements the red, also because it's very descriptive of what this is, the lobster trap. That's the color plan, that's the reason for these um, choices in my design. So from here, it's a matter of painting it. So what I'm going to do with my, my watercolor plan is two-stage. One is to paint an underpainting um, with uh, trying to get some of the light hues established. The, the hue in the sky, for example. Cerulean melting into a yellow ochre. Uh, an underpainting for the warm hues through the front of the <coughs> shack, the lobster shack, motif number one. I want to establish that. I'm going to keep this white, I'm going to keep this white, um, because they're easy shapes to keep white, and I don't want them to, I want to keep some edge there. The other areas, I'm okay with it bleeding out a little bit, so I'm going to keep the first layer rather ambiguous, uh, describing some of the local color, setting some of the high notes, preserving some of the edges. And then we'll get into the second stage, which will be a little more definitive. So let me get ready here. And I've squirted out the alizarin crimson, yellow ochre. This is a, a Daniel Smith color, vermilion, I believe. What, yeah, something like that. Cerulean, lavender, ultramarine blue, so three reds, sorry, two reds, a yellow, and basically three blues. I'm not sure if I'm going to use, uh, well, I will use all of them. I might even end up putting out a bit of burnt sienna to give me a better gray. Anyway, we'll see. Let's start with yellow ochre. Very warm painting. 
even the blues will be on the warmer side. And a bit of this cerulean. We haven't used cerulean. It's a nice green blue. Anyway, we get started with the yellow ochre. Lighter value. Starting about uh, halfway down. And I'm going to go right over everything. Like I said, I want to preserve that shape of the rooftop for now. And I want to carry this up a little bit. A lot of water in this stage. Let's carry it up. And then let's drop in some cerulean blue. Into that yellow ochre. I don't want, this is very, I want it to be very pale. So not a lot, not very thick, not very dark. And the sun is in the, in the, to the left. So I'm going to keep it even paler, just a little paler to the left. A little darker. a little bit, not a lot. And hopefully we get just a nice soft bleed there from the top down. And we can continue downward. Let's define the top of this house. Maybe some rooftops back there. like that. And let's go for a little of the red while it's wet. some red. And I'm not overly worried about edges at this point. Just want to get some, some of this color happening. The edge that I do want to preserve is this edge right across here. And the edge of my rooftop. So 
So let's get this nice and juicy. I'm not even going to worry about the figures. I'm not going to worry about the back edge. I want there to be a bit of bleeding there. Mixing three colors here. And we'll bring it right up to these lobster traps, right over the figures. I have some plans for the figures. Let it bleed a little bit back here, over here. Why not? even down into our lobster traps a bit. Then we take some of this pure cerulean. There's a little cobalt turquoise over here too that I'm going to pick up. Just happened to be there. I think it was left for a reason, possibly. And I'm going to drop it right into here. some whites there. I'm also going to take a little smaller brush and place some of this bright red you know here and there. Why not? I don't know that it needs to go everywhere but here and there. How about some of that over here? Yeah. While it's wet. Okay, let's Take some of this, oh, we got some lavender and some cerulean here. This is very wet through here. Let's place a little of that color on the figures. It's picking up some of this. Let's place some of this cerulean into the figures, like so. It's got a bit of water with it. It's gonna move out some of that reddish color. Put a little water there as well. Two, three, four, five. Maybe we'll put a figure over here too. And then let's start to carry the yellow ochre again. Down here. Let's try for a rough edge. Even a bit of red down there is okay. I'm going to add just a little bit of this bright cobalt turquoise on this edge here. It's got a little bit of opacity to it. So we're building off grays primarily, 
right? This is a gray, blue to yellow, the red bleeding into the um, yellows, all these hues so far sort of amorphic blending. There is a power to that red, which uh, we do want. It's going to dry a bit lighter. Um, what was I doing? A little cobalt turquoise into this figure too. Maybe a little water as well. Just taking some water. Still pretty damp. And this is sort of moving out some of that color. Keeping it a little brighter, perhaps. It's also blurring the color a little bit. I think we're okay. Just smush stuff up a little more there. You know what? That becomes a pylon. It's okay. or a bullock, whatever they're called. All right. Our building is blushing. Let's let this dry and then we'll go to the next stage. Dry surface. You see it's dried pretty well. Color transitions are good. And we can start to build in our grays. And I'm going to start, I guess, in the background. Here we start to mix more grays on the palette. Looking for a variation, not too dark. Something that's going to give me a little feeling of mist. Put a little bit of blue into this one. I'm just going to start to build the trees. Cut around some of those rooftops that we drew in. Suggesting them. Merely suggesting. Like that. A little wet. 
And a little more yellow over here into that gray mixture. Semblance of trees. Coming down right on this rooftop here. And let's go just a little darker through here. And a little cooler too, I think. So we can put a bit more blue in there. Ultramarine. A little bit of lavender. Oops, too much lavender. It's a potent color. Anyway, we keep making a variation. Variety, variety. Just a sensation of foliage back there, all gray. And I'm going to take a smaller brush and add, oops, not that much. I wanted to add a little gray through the front of this house, for example. A little warm hue to the front of this house, for example. Maybe the same through here. We'll put something on that roof shortly. A little more of this bluish gray through this part of the house. Front faces us. I'm going to bring that all the way down. Here, a little more blue. water. Just to wash up that area. Okay, let's go for this back building.
basically I want to start with the roof which is a warmer gray take some yellow ochre maybe a bit of red certainly some of this blue it's going to be mixed with everything going forward blue and little red want to get a nice darker hue here a little warmer that darkness I feel is about right about right. And we'll get as close as we can. Maybe we put a little blue on the front or lower down on the roof, a little more blue. So that bleed down. Just to get a little movement there. And carry that up the chimney as well. Just add a little. Carry this dark up the chimney as well. Not too thick, come on. Just for a moment, it's okay. Just an extension of that dark. Right, let's continue. We'll go to the front side of this building next. A bit darker. We can mix the color maybe right down the page here. Now that red hue starts to come out a little bit. Almost just blue on top of there. Should have a little gray with it. Little yellow with it. And start to define 
our lobster traps and our lobster men. Define them as a group first. It's a little too pretty. A little more yellow. Right, let's start to carry this. Just want to mix this in a little better. Well, let's carry this gray, this cool gray, across the front. Some nice shadows here. Some nice shadows here as well. I'm using a little bit of a squared off brush to help me get some edges here. Put a little more red in that. See what it looks like.
here as well. Maybe not quite so dark. to get some light there. A little blue up here. See how it looks. Looks okay. Let's carry this down on the side here as well. And join up this shadow color. Everything in shadow. Keep it wet a little longer. Bring a little more to this front part. A little tricky here, but Something like this. All right. I'm going to erase a little bit of this. Well, how high, how high do I want them to go? Maybe this height is about right. Let's make it a little more of a reg in a regular shape, though. So it looks more like boxes. Something like that. So far, so good. Put in some details. I have a little window here. Some texture there. Let's put uh, some dry brush onto the ground. 
that make sense sequentially. Well, let's start to do a little texture actually into the stones below. So we can make something. I uh, use the same basic color. looking for a nice pattern of blocks. And they're sort of just set one on top of the other. just to get it going. The worst thing you can do is copy it block for block, but you never get that feel of the pattern. So this way, we're thinking about repeating a similar size growing a little bigger as it comes this way, following some lines of perspective, just starting to set up that pattern like this. We'll repeat that a little bit in the work below uh, in the lobster traps using a little different color of course. We use some more of this green start to create another interesting rhythm, more pattern. repeated shapes. And the form starts to emerge. Okay. Well, what I want to do here is start to adjust the whites, I think, so that I can start to resolve the center of interest. Now the light is kind of raking across here, so it's going to get a little deeper through here, a little brighter through here. I want dry brush and basically a repeat of that yellow ochre color. Much lighter. A lot of water.
as it goes left a little warmer and even more water dry brush dry brush just to knock down that white a little bit Kind of put things in a directional light. A little lighter over here, coming darker as it moves in this direction. Okay, and we want the same in the roof, the major rooftop. Go a little, push that back, push that back into the painting a little bit. And this one we want to kind of rake across this way. So a little brighter through here and a little darker. Maybe a little brighter towards the pitch of the roof, a little darker towards the eaves. Same warm color. Sunstruck. If we want to say sunstruck, use a warm color. And kind of following some sense of the tiles. this. See how that gradient works? Same down here. And we're going to introduce it into the stones as well. Start to get a misty early morning feel. Okay, I think the next thing to do is to bring in some more relief, more gray to the stones, that side of the stones. Certainly we can add some darks to the pilings. Maybe that's what we need to do. Not too much. Not too much. Okay, we're going to put some finishing touches on our painting. I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow ochre on the walkway here. Just to Knock it down a little bit. Here. Like so. a little better. Then I'm going to start to put on some of the small touches of this red to show the What I want to show is the overalls and other elements, other parts of the clothing. There we go. This red will do.
and I'm using this, uh, basically it's cadmium orange red made by Holbein. The goal here is to use some bright color to make this color pop a little more. and also give our characters some expression. Now this is the fashion of the lobsterman, these bright orange coveralls. And I have some of this lavender, which we've been using throughout the painting. I'm just going to add a couple touches of the lavender here. This one a little darker. Put in some of that scarlet vermilion. About what to do about that figure on the right.
Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's got their lobster red on. This cobalt turquoise. For a hat. I think that the um, Jean Brilliant might be a better touch here. That yellow color mixes, it works a little better with the yellow ochre that we've been using throughout. to rescue this figure here. Since they're good buddies, we're kind of joining them into one. They're against the light. It's a little better, but we can make it even darker, I think.
Yeah, that'll be okay. This tune can be a little darker. Well, thank you for watching to the end. I hope you found this content interesting and inspiring. Have a look at the description below to find out more about this project. Or click the banner up above to visit my webpage and learn about workshops and in-person classes, as well as other important resources.